Yo, peoples, Kyushu92 here, and welcome back to yet another One Piece anime reaction. Onwards to the next episode, so let's get it started! Ooh, we're getting started. The Will of Ohara, the Inherited Research. We get to continue off of the information we learned last time. Uh, oh, Ohara, West Blue, 22 years ago. Yo, this is the aftermath. Several months after the Buster Call. What once was a vividly green and vibrant looking landscape is nothing but utter ruins now. Who is this? Good job protecting this. You guys won. It's a victory for Ohara. Man got tears in his eyes. Bro, where? Okay. Where does this man think? Yo, giants? Giants! Harudin! It's Harudin! So you mean to tell me before this man went to Dressrosa to battle as a gladiator, this man went to Ohara to help get the books out? Also, can we just talk about how this man tried to hide himself, but this man's got the biggest 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 head! Monkey D. Dragon, leader of the Freedom Fighters! Dr. Vegapunk, head of the Punk Hazard Lab. This man got the biggest head I've ever seen. Man, Jimmy Neutron's head looked like a peanut compared to this guy. This man's brain blast must take five minutes to get through. Yo, dragons are just letting him know they good. They come from Elbaf, they know the value of the books. What, what does that say about the giants? They know the value. Ooh, their captain is a strange man with bandages all over his body. He said Ohara saved their legacy by sacrificing their lives, and I won't let it be erased from history. I think we know who that is. Calling out Vegapunk for working with the world government. After he turned down Dragon's invitation to join the Freedom Fighters. This incident hit me hard. Harmless scholars who just questioned the unreasonableness that is the law. Ooh, were crushed by violence. I love it when Dragon speaks. I will build an army that can fight. Look, what the world government thought they were- Ooh, later that year, Dragon teamed up with Emporio Ivankov, Basarobu Kuma, to create the revolutionary army that now rocks the world. And now we're here back in the present. So now the Straw Hat crew knows. And Sanji's all like, I didn't know Eva was part of the Revolutionary Army. Just shows you how little your relationship is with Eva during your time at the Kamabaka Queendom. I'm being serious. Every single time I see Kuma, I keep wanting for him to become a playable character for Pirate Warriors 4. Look at this man's head. He is a walking baseball bat. Look at that shape. Yo, you can make out the shape of his body. Yeah, and Vega, yeah, apparently Vegapunk went to Elbaf and read all the books. All of them. So Vegapunk knows everything. He knows everything. Yo, Rob is asking who the man with the bandages is. That captain of the giants who hold out the books from Ohara. And we just keep cutting back to Jaguar de Saul. The name of the giant captain is... And look at her with tears in her eyes, hearing the name of the person... Hearing the name of the person she... She holds dear. Look at her. See? Look at her face. That's no longer the sad, distraught face she had the episode ago. That's happy tears. When's the last time we seen Robin have happy tears? I'm happy for knowing that Saul is alive. Okay, controlling the Dom shoes to make them walk with him. Well, not really walk, just slide across the floor. Oh, okay. Shaka wants to see, uh, show him something. Seriously, can anyone tell me where to get Shaka's giant hoodie? Okay, I want it. I want it. Someone tell me. I need it. It's back at the scrapyard in the Fabrio face. Dude just said that my head got too big, so I cut it. Wow, his head was almost the size of a giant. Well, actually, I'm 
A brain, 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 brain. And he bit his tongue trying to say it. A brain, brain fruit user can memorize all kinds of knowledge without limit, but my brain gets bigger and bigger in proportion to the data capacity. And all of his knowledge apparently still keeps growing. Okay, so the apple is an antenna. Punk Records is written underneath the giant egg. That's my brain storage. The entirety of Punk Records is where Vegapunk keeps all of his knowledge. Vegapunk's introducing all of his clones. Each of them is an expert in the fields I require. Shaka is always calm and good. Good Shaka! The evil Lilith is even willing to plunder. Evil Lilith! An inventor, Edison! Thinker, Edison! The wise Pythagoras has an inquiring mind. Pythagoras, wisdom. Atlas's job is to be violent. Violence, Atlas! Eat, bathroom, sleep. The greedy York! Greed, York! The six of them co together comprise my personality. But their work output is six people's worth. Once daily, they synchronize their experience and knowledge via punk records. Their personalities and missions are different, making each experience worthwhile. And Luffy is not following any of this. See, everyone gets it but Luffy. I'm pretty sure Vegapunk lost him the moment he stopped. He started talking. Oh, and he w and Vegapunk wants to share his knowledge with the whole world. His dream is to... Okay. All humankind can share the same brain one day. Those are some large ambitions to share everything he knows with the rest of the world. However, ah, oh, we get Vegapunk's laugh. Oh, it looks like while well, Bonnie's threatening Vegapunk, it looks like that beam is not meant to be a weapon. It's meant to be a beam that attracts giant insects. Eee. And now we're here in the control room. Well, they're able to see Luffy now from the control room. Yeah, Bonnie's done after all them bugs showed up. Wow. Okay. Okay. Vegapunk talking about the artificial devil fruit he created from Punk Hazard. Saying it was failed. Spent 20 years and a lot of research money to create it from Kaido's bloodline limits. <laughs> Look at him. He asked what was the color of the dragon? What was the color of Momonosuke? Luffy says it was pink, and he, that's the reason why Vegapunk considers it a failure. Simply because it's not the same color as Kaido. Dude is a perfectionist, ain't he? Ooh, this is the legendary Iron Giant that is said to have attacked Sacred Marijua 200 years ago. And we got a ship coming in. A world government ship. Oh, Luchi's arrived! The amazing scientific power of 900 years ago is revealed in front of the Iron Giant. Vegapunk, who is fascinated by the energy of a faraway antiquity, who is overflowing with ideas and ideals. What lies ahead in the future that he dreams of? On the next episode of One Piece, the eccentric dream of a genius. I'm going to become the king of the pirates. All right. Things are really starting to heat up. So let me just say this. The moment where we see a younger Vegapunk, him and his 15 head, uh, speaking with Dragon, coming back to Ohara several months after the Buster Call, only to see giants, which includes Harudin, taking the books and bringing them to Elbaf, and then finding out that the person who orchestrated the giants to get all of these books was none other than Saul himself. Uh, can we just talk about how wholesome of a moment it was for Robin to actually have happy tears? Like, genuine happy tears. And th mind you, these aren't like tears of when she just, when she was with the Straw Hats and they decided to save her life uh, during Annie's lobby. These, these are happy tears from deep within, like all the way to her childhood, where she was just chilling with Saul. You know, had no care in the world was a scholar with the rest of the other scholars of on uh, of Ohara and was just, you know, chilling with Saul, learn how to laugh and actually be happy, more than just a simple scholar, but also a child and enjoy her life a little bit before the whole buster call happened. So those tears from Robin are not just regular happy tears. Those are childhood memory tears. And I have to say that is the most wholesome we have seen of Robin in such a long 
time. I enjoyed it, though. I enjoyed seeing Robin actually having a moment where she's genuinely happy to think of someone from Ohara to the point where she's tearing up because of because Jaguar D. Saul had a massive impact on on Robin's life. Literally the person that told her that some people will come around and show you true happiness. Some people, real friends. And now that she's found that in a straw hat crew, and now that she knows that Saul is alive, though he's in hiding right now, that's that's a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling for Robin that I feel that she hasn't felt in such a long time. So I'm happy for her. We also find out more information about how the Revolutionary Army got started. It's because of the Ohara incident that Dragon decided to start the Freedom Fighters and then create an army that would go up against the world government and the Celestial Dragons. And, I mean, the world government kind of messed up in, in trying to keep all this knowledge hidden because now they prompted someone to go up against them directly. Like, yeah, we're going to war with you. So, just so many things, so many, so much information being told to us. And then finding out that the giant is, was part of a part of an attack 200 years ago on Marijua, sacred Marijua. So much information from Egghead that you anime-only viewers have only barely scratched the surface of. Can't wait to see where these episodes go from here. Can't wait to see what episode I get on my birthday next Saturday, so that should be interesting as well. But overall... Good episode. I enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next one. Also looking forward to tomorrow's chapter for One Piece as well. So to everyone here, whether you're new here or if you're a veteran, all I can say to you is, hope you all enjoyed. Can't wait to see you all in my next video. And if you made it to the end of the video and you're new to this channel, like, comment, even subscribe if you haven't already, because I am always looking forward to entertaining you. So have a fantastic day. And once again, as always, later, peoples. And thank you to all of my moderators and members who helped make what I do possible.